So I'm just going to create a bouncy ball animation. So first thing we'll need is the actual ball itself. Switching to the camera in the item list and then switching to the camera view, we'll just pull back by right clicking on the Y on the Z dot and then right click dragging on the Y dot, we'll move it up on Y. We'll just adjust that little. So we'll just select our bounce our ball object and then pull this motion graph up. Masai always has a motion graph down here, so you can pull that up so you can see it. And we'll change the final out um, range here to be frame 100. And alternatively, you can just enter in 100 here on the numerical input down here on out. So on frame 0, we'll just select the ball and left click drag on the Y dot. Um, alternatively, you can just left click drag on anywhere as long as you know that the Y is selected. A good way to know that Y is selected is by pressing the shortcut key for Y, which is 2 on your keyboard. So we've got that up high, and then we're going to want it to fall and land down on the ground at frame 10. So here on frame 10, we'll just have it penetrate the ground a little bit. And then on frame 20, we're going to want it to bounce back up. And so we'll have it bounce up about half the height that we dropped it from. So um, as we scrub, we can see that it's kind of got a slow down at the bottom. What we're going to want to do is adjust um, the motion curve so that it peaks down the bottom here. To do that, you just left click so that you have the item selected and then control left click drag to adjust the tension of any particular control point. So we'll just control those motion graphs so that um, it falls gradually uh, on the apex and then on the bottom here it peaks out. And you can see the values that you're editing by clicking on the Animate Spline tab here. And you can see that in the bottom I have the tension set to negative 1. And then here it's set to 0.5, roughly. So that creates a more natural bounce. To get a cool squash and stretch effect, what we're going to want to do is make sure that we're on the independent channel. And then on Scale, Y, we'll create a new keyframe. And we'll just want to scale that up. Make sure that here on frame 10, we'll create a new keyframe. And then that on frame 10, we're going to want it to be squashed. And so we'll put that down. We'll do a value of 0.8. And then on frame 11, we're going to want it to be the same as frame 9, so we'll select frame 9, right click here on copy, create a new keyframe on frame 11, and then right click on paste. And so you can see that as it falls down, um, it squashes really high, and then boink, it squashes out flat to be a value of 0.8, and then shoots back up again. We've gone way too high on that, so we can just quickly edit those down to be about 0.2. So there we have animated the Y position, the Y squash. So we're going to want to do uh, the opposite on X and Z. We're going to want to create a keyframe here and make it so that it thins out. We'll do 0.8 there and the same with Z, create 0.8. Um, here where it actually squashes on frame 10, we'll create a new keyframe and we'll put a value of uh, 1.2 so that it flattens out. And the same here, 1.2. And we'll just copy, right click to copy, and that'll copy everything. And then create a new keyframe and paste. And so there we go, a little doink, doink, cool. So we're going to want to now copy all these keyframes that we've created for the initial part of the bounce. Right click on copy, select frame 20, and right click on paste, 
and that will copy all the keyframes along to create the second bounce. So here on frame 40 we'll just left click on create and then right click on paste again and we'll just paste that along for all of our bounces. Now obviously we want um, this is pretty weird physics if the bounce continues to be very high all the way along so what we're going to want to do is lower the intensity of each of these uh, values as it goes. So we'll just play with the scales on the squash and fret scratch first since we're here. We'll just make sure we have them all selected and then just grab all the keyframes and move them down accordingly. Um, shift uh, drag select will deselect the values. So we're just adjusting all of the X, Y, Z scales here. Just make them go way down at the bottom. And then the final keyframe, we're just going to want to right click here on reset all and make sure that it goes back to its default position. So now as it bounces, it'll squash and stretch less as it goes along. On the Y position, we're obviously going to want to have it bounce less as it goes along. And so we can just easily just control the height of the bounce as it goes along. So we'll look at how what that did. Doink, doink, doink. Now it looks really weird, it kind of slows down towards the end. So what we can do is left click drag on these notches on the top. Um, actually we we'll need to make sure that we're in the dope sheet editor and make sure we have all these channels selected so we can see we we'll make sure that we have everything here selected and we'll just shift left click left click drag and then we can move these keyframes shift left click will toggle the selection And we'll move these two and we'll move these ones three okay turn off the dope sheet and let's watch what we've done that's a pretty good pretty good little bounce looks a bit odd how it comes to a complete stop so quickly so let's just give it a little bit of life towards the end there um, on the Y position we'll just uh, from the left view just make sure that it has a little bit of a f kind of a coming to rest bounce there alright now as you can see from the left view we don't really like how it's um, penetrating the ground there It'll cause some strange artifacts. So what we're going to want to do is get a little bit fancy and apply an effect. We're going to apply the uh, melt effect to the bouncing ball. So I've just selected the object and then I'll click left click here on this little plus sign to apply melt. And then back in the animate tab, if you go to the left view you can see that nothing penetrates the Y plane now. Everything just goes boink and nothing allows it to go further. So that's kind of created a cool little effect. Unfortunately it's melted a little bit too aggressively but there's an easy way to adjust that by on frame 0 we'll just turn the melt spread down to nothing. So as it hits the ground it will never uh, allow any of the geometry to go penetrate the ground plane. So that's kind of a cool effect. So let's play that. Boink, boink, boink. 
Well, that's pretty cool. And there's our Messiah Bouncy Ball Tutorial Animation. Tutorial.